Welcome to Smyrna Christian Church, where the entire Word of God is taught straight from the Bible. Good evening. Welcome back to Smyrna Christian Church, back in the book of Judges, chapter 5 today. In our last study, remember, even Barak, basically the head of the armies of Israel, he was afraid to go up to battle. But Deborah, she was a prophetess and she was, all, she was also a judge in Israel. She said, look, the Lord told us to go up to battle and he is going to give us the victory. And Barak said, OK, I'll go if you go. And we mentioned Deborah being a type of God's elect. She was not afraid. She completely believed God. If God says you're going to have the victory, you're going to have the victory. And she was prepared to do whatever God wanted her to do. She was bold. She was courageous. And God used her and God also used a woman named Jael who would, um, she would have the enemy in her own tent. And while he was laying down to sleep, she took a, a, a tent peg, a spike that was a tent peg, and she drove it through his head, killed him with a hammer, defeated the enemy. God using those two women to bring about the victory. And remember, God will use anybody who is willing to serve him. Now, we're going to come to, in chapter 5, is going to be Deborah and Barak singing a song, praising the Lord for giving them victory. Now, what does that remind you of? I hope it reminds you of Revelation chapter 15, where it says, Those who have the victory over the false Christ, they are going to be singing the song of Moses. You can read the Song of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 32. And there's also even a Song of Moses in Exodus chapter 15. But don't overlook the fact that those who will be singing that song, they have the victory over the false Christ. Did it say those who flew away somewhere? No, of course not, because nobody's flying away. That's a false doctrine taught by men. But your job is to stand against the false Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. And when you do that, when the true Christ returns, you will be singing the song of Moses. So let's get into this song, praising our Heavenly Father for giving us the victory. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your written word and for this place you've given us. We can teach your word. We thank you for always giving us the victory over our enemies through the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you to guide us through this study with your Holy Spirit. We ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear, to understand and teach your word. We ask that your words be spoken and your will be done during this study. Thank you and we love you, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, Judges chapter 5, verse 1, and it reads, Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoam, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord. For the avenging of Israel, that word avenging, the Hebrew word literally means to lead, and God is always the leader. When the people willingly offered themselves, they were willing to fight. We're going to find out in this chapter, not everybody was, but there were many who were willing to serve God. They didn't just sit around saying, oh, I'm saved and not doing anything. And remember, that's what so many lessons of the Old Testament teach. A lot of people say, oh, this is just stories. No, there were these physical battles teaching us how to win in the spiritual battle against the devil, which is much more important than any physical war. So definitely learn the types and the lessons that God teaches us from this. Verse 3, Hear ye, O kings, that's to say the kings even of other nations, give ear, O ye princes, I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Deborah and Barak letting everybody know that it wasn't like it was they did anything special, but it was Almighty God that did something very special and gave them the victory. And ask yourself, when God blesses you, when He pulls you out of a tight situation, do you thank Him? Do you give Him the praise and the honor and the glory? I sure hope so. And yesterday I, I mentioned a verse about how it, it says that, why are you bragging about what, what you have? It's God that gave it to you. And I, I couldn't remember what that verse was. And it's, for, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. And remember, any gift you have, God is the one that gave you that gift. And you always give Him the praise. Give Him the credit. Verse 4. Lord, when thou wentest out of Sire, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, 
the earth trembled, and the heavens dropped, the clouds also dropped water, the mountains melted or flowed down from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. Now, these two verses uh, takes you all the way back to even when uh, God spoke from Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 19 and 20, even when He gave the Ten Commandments. And then even, you can, it also connects you to when He even brought the Israelites through the wilderness those 40 years and brought them into the Promised Land. You can connect this to Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 2, and also Psalms chapter 68, verses 6 through 8. And once again, God never changes. He gave them the victory all those different times, just like He's going to give us the victory in the future. So do you believe that or not? God performing many, even miracles to deliver His children, and that's what He will do for you if you love Him and you serve Him. Verse 6. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied, and the travelers walked through byways. That word byways means winding roads. And what this is saying is that they were so oppressed and afraid of the enemy that they wouldn't even walk on the main roads. They would take these back roads just, just to stay away from the enemy instead of taking a straight path, take all these winding paths, which would take way longer. But they were afraid of the enemy. And, and how, how, remember Shamgar, he was a judge we had at the end of uh, chapter 3. But you see, if, if you're not serving God and you want to go in the ways of, of serving false gods, God will let the enemy have victory over you. And it, even in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, it says that if you serve God, then 10 can put 10,000 to flight. But if you don't serve God, then you're going to run just at the sound of a rustling leaf. So it's your choice. Do you want to be blessed or not? Verse 7. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. Just like a mother would take care of her children. That's what Deborah did. But of course, like they're saying throughout this whole chapter, it's God that did it. But God raised up this courageous, righteous woman to be the leader, even to give them the victory. Verse 8, they chose new gods. And, you know, people today, they're always looking for some new doctrine. Why not just stick to the Word of God, to the Bible, which is God's Word? But people always want to find something new. And anything new that's not God's Word that has to do with religion, it's going to lead you astray every single time. It's a tragedy that most people just don't stick to the Bible. They always want to go something else. They chose new gods, then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? That, remember, even Shamgar had to use an ox goad to, to defeat the enemy at that time. So they were just being completely overcome by the enemy at this time. Verse 9. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. And you might think of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15, where Paul is saying that I, I will gladly spend and be spent for your sake. Paul is saying I'll dedicate my whole entire life to serving God. He said I'm willing to be spent and exhausted in order to bring as many as possible to Jesus Christ. And he did that willingly. He wouldn't even take any money for it. But he said, he said, I don't want to make the gospel of Christ. I don't want to be a burden on someone. He's saying, I don't want anyone to think I'm doing it for the money. So he, did, he didn't take any money. And Paul was, was so righteous, saying, I'm, I'm willing to do anything to bring people to Christ. And then he would even also say in that verse, he would say, even though he said, the more that, that I do, that I try to help others, the less I be loved. But you see, we don't seek uh, praise from men like it would say in another place, if your goal is to be pleasing to men, then you should not be the servant of Christ. But Paul and those who serve God, they only care what God thinks, and they are willing to dedicate their lives. And that doesn't mean that you can't still enjoy life and have recreational activities, but you always put God number one in your life, and you do it willingly because you love God. I mean, God came as the Son, Jesus Christ, and died on the cross and resurrected for us. The least you can do is willingly serve Him, get into His Word, so you know what He wants you to do. Verse 10, 
speak, ye that ride on white asses, that's to say rich people who are even royalty, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. This is, this is saying all, all people, basically, is what, what this is covering. Verse 11, they that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. They won't be afraid anymore because God gave them the victory. God delivered them. And this is saying at this time they couldn't even go get some water out of the well without some people trying to shoot them with arrows. But God delivered them. And so now, instead of having to worry about getting killed, now when they get water, they praise God for his deliverance, for the righteous things that he's done for us. And I hope that you give God the praise and you give him glory to others. Verse 12. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake. Utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive. Thou son of Abinoam, that they were captive before, but now God has delivered the enemies into their hand captive. Verse 13. Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. Those who were willing to stand up for what's right, willing to stand up for God. God delivered the enemy right to him. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. And then you might think of Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, where it says when Jesus Christ returns, even the Kenites are going to be at your feet worshiping. They're not going to be worshiping you. They're going to be worshiping Christ. But you're right there with Christ because you stayed loyal to him. And remember Isaiah, or I mean, Psalm chapter 58, one of the last verses, it says there is a reward for the righteous. So don't, and it also is saying how God's wrath comes down on the wicked in that chapter. So don't worry, everyone gets what they deserve, good or bad, like it also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. You do have a reward coming if you stay true to Almighty God. Verse 14. Out of Ephraim was there a root of them against Amalek. This is those that were of the tribe of Ephraim who were even living in the Mount of Amalek, like you read in, uh, we're going to get to in Judges chapter 12, verse 15. So Ephraim, they were willing to make a stand. After thee, Benjamin, among thy people, out of, uh, out of Maker came down governors. Maker is those um, of half of Manasseh on the west side. So they came down governors, and out of Zebulun, they that handle the pen of the rider, that's to say the, they're part of the army, they, they number the troops. So some of these people of these tribes, they were willing to fight for God. They were willing to do something. Verse 16, and the, or verse 15, And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah. They were willing to go, even Issachar and also Barak. He was sent on foot into the valley. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great thoughts of heart. You see, Reuben, they, they talked a big game, but they didn't actually do anything. And when it says the, um, the divisions of Reuben, that's talking about their land allotments. They were too comfortable at home. They didn't want to make a stand. They're saying, oh, we're, we're fine right here. We, we, we're doing just fine. We don't need to do anything for God. How, how often is that people's mindset today? And remember in, in Mark chapter 4, verse 19, even the parable of the sower, where it even says that the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and, and the lusts of other things, that they choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. If, if, you are, if you put other things a priority above serving God, you become unfruitful. You don't want to do anything? Well, then God's not going to do anything for you probably. I mean, why should he if you're not willing to make up a, if you're not willing to make a stand for him? Verse 16. Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds to hear the bleedings of the flocks? You're just going to sit around there with the sheep when you could be doing something for God? What if David would have just done that? He was a shepherd. But no, he ran to fight against the Philistine, the giant, and God gave him the victory. For the divisions of Reuben, there, Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. Once again, they, they talked a big game, but they never did anything. And remember Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10, it says, God searches the hearts, he tries the reins to give everyone according to their works and according to the fruit of their doings. Not just what they sat around thinking about or talking about, 
but you are judged according to your works. Saved by faith, yes, but you are judged according to your works. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Revelation chapter 20, the last few verses. And remember like it says in James chapter 2, verse 20, faith without works is dead. Verse 17. Gilead, this would be the, um, the other half of Manasseh on the east side, abode beyond Jordan. And why did Dan remain in ships? They just stayed in their ships instead of going out for God. Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. Once again, they're, they're just a little bit too comfortable. They, they didn't want to rock the boat any, you know. Oh, I'm fine here. So don't ever have that type of mindset. And remember, Judges chapter 3, uh, verse 2, God said, I'm, I'm leaving some of these Canaanites here so I can teach you to war. But they didn't want to. They didn't want to serve God. And remember, the war that we fight is not, the main war is not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's Ephesians chapter 6, where it also teaches you about the armor of God that you better have on always. Verse 18. Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. They were even willing to put their very lives on the line. And I'll mention Paul again, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 and the following verses. It says he was shipwrecked multiple times. He, he, he was beaten with, with 39 stripes. I mean, he, he went through some terrible, terrible times. Things that basically nobody else is ever going to have to go through. Not the, not the whole thing that Paul had to go through. I mean, he went through more than basically anybody. And same with Job, but they never cursed God. And they kept on doing what was right, serving our Heavenly Father. And Paul was. He was willing to put his life on the line often. But God continued and continued to protect him because God had work for him to do. And Paul was willing to do it. But remember, even when you stand against the false Christ, you know that not even one hair on your head is going to perish. That's Luke 21, 18. I mention those verses all the time. I'm going to say the other one I always say, Luke 10, 17 through 20. You have power over all your enemies through the name of Jesus Christ and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And that's specifically referring to when Satan is on earth as the false Christ, when he falls as a star, as lightning from heaven. So what do you have to worry about? Nothing. Verse 19. The kings came and fought. Then fought the kings of Canaan in Taanach by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They thought they were going to. They thought they were going to just take everything from us, from our people. But they didn't because God gave them the victory. They got nothing. Verse 20. They fought from heaven. Well, who is this that fought from heaven? The army of angels. That army of angels you read about in 2 Kings chapter 6, about verses 14 through 18. That army that's in a dimension that we can't even see. But God allowed the young man in that verse to, to see that army of angels. And they do fight for us today often. So don't ever forget, it doesn't matter how high the odds might seem stacked against you. If you know you're serving God and you're doing what's right and you're using common sense, not doing something stupid, God's going to protect you every single time. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. And remember Matthew chapter 18, verse 10, it even says that those who love and serve God, their angels behold the face of God at any time, ready to protect you. And they truly do. And remember, it's God that does it. Verse 21. The river of Kishon swept them away, that ancient river, the river Kishon. O oh, my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. And God will even use natural ways of the earth to, to even defeat your enemies. You might think of also Revelation chapter 12. And uh, remember uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 19, referring to the last part of this verse, how it says, my, O oh, my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. What it says in Ecclesiastes 7, 19 is that wisdom gives you more strength than 10 mighty men. If you have the wisdom of God's word, it doesn't. Remember, David went up and slew the giant. Didn't matter that he was probably 100 times stronger than David. David had the wisdom to know who the true God is, Yahweh, and he gave him the victory. 
Verse 22, Then were the horse hooves broken by the means of the prancings, the prancings of their mighty ones. This means when, the, when they were trying to get away, God didn't even allow them to get away, but even the horse hooves were broken, even when they were fleeing away. Verse 23, Kershi Miros, now this is a place where many were that decided they didn't want to do anything for God. Said the angel of the Lord, that's God himself, as had been made very clear a couple times as we've been studying in Judges. Kershi bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. And even I already said James 2.20, faith without works is dead. And then James chapter 1 verse 22 says, you're not supposed to just hear the word, but you are supposed to be a doer of the word. Remember the tribes of Reuben, they had a lot of, they really talked a big game, but they didn't do anything. Are you willing to make the stand for God or not? Verse 24, blessed above women shall Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. That last phrase might remind you of Luke 1, 28, when Gabriel speaking to Mary. We've talked about it about three times now, two or three times, that he, he lived among the Kenites, is why he was called a Kenite, but he is of the tribe of, of Median. So and we've, we covered that in depth in our very first study in Judges, if you want to go deeper into that. We've done that enough already. Verse 25. He, he being Sisera, asked water, and she gave him milk. Remember, this is when uh, Jael just lulled the enemy right to sleep. Sisera coming into this woman's tent, he underestimated her big time. He didn't think he had to worry about a woman. Well, that's one of the biggest mistakes anybody could ever make, because men and women are equal in God's eyes, and they both are incredible servants of Almighty God. It doesn't matter what gender you are. If you serve God, the enemy better fear you. So he just asked for water, but she came and she even gave him some buttermilk. And uh, let's go ahead and keep going. She brought forth butter in a lordly dish, brought in a real nice dish. This buttermilk is, I think, what that means. 26, remember, she being wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And it means innocent as doves, like it says to do in uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 16. Or no, chapter 10, verse 16 is where it says that. They lived peaceably among the enemy. But then when their enemy tried to destroy their people, J uh, Jael acted like she was friends with them. And then let, let's read what she did. Verse 26. And we already read it yesterday. We have it here again. 26. And she put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer. And with the hammer she smote Sisera. She smote off his head. That means that she crushed his head. She took the tent peg, the spike, and she drove it right through uh, Sisera's head. That's what J.L. did, nailing his face to the floor. A very righteous thing. And like we compared it to yesterday, this would be like a terrorist coming into your house. Would you just let the terrorist go so he could go kill more of your people? Of course not. Remember, this was war. This was real war. It wouldn't be righteous for you to just go in somebody's house or just lure someone you don't like into your house and do this. No, that would be a very evil thing. But this was true war. Like I said, this would be like if a terrorist was in your house. And it was a very righteous thing that, that J.L. did here to defeat the enemy. When she had pierced and stricken through his temples. Remember Psalms 144 says, God gives my uh, fingers the strength and the ability to fight. Verse 27. Remember, that's not going around getting in fist fights. But in a war, he gives us the strength to defeat our enemies. Verse 27, at her feet he bowed, he fell, he lay down. That's a, like a figure of speech. He was defeated. His face was nailed to the floor. At her feet he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed there, he fell down dead. And just like he underestimated Jael, just like Goliath underestimated David, and like Satan is going to underestimate you when you stand against him, they're all going to fall. Only it's not going to be physical for Satan. But the sword of the Lord, which is the word of God, is going to come out of your mouth when the Holy Spirit speaks through you. And that will defeat him and his, Satan's head will be crushed at the return of our Savior Jesus Christ. Then he'll be locked in the pit for a thousand years, that thousand year teaching period. And then at the end of the millennium, he will finally meet his final demise and his soul will perish. Verse 28. 
The mother of Sisera looked out at a window and cried through the lattice, Why is his chariot so long in coming? This is a... This Sisera's mom, Sisera who got his head nailed to the floor. She's saying he should have been back by now. She's starting to get a little worried probably. And why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Why is he not back yet? 29. Her wise ladies, or they claim to be, wise ladies answered her. Yea, she returned answer to herself. Have they not sped? That means have they not found? Probably saying have they not found um, the, the enemies? Have they not divided the prey? So what these, what the mom and these wise ladies are saying, oh no, Sisera, he's going and he already defeated them. It's just taking them a long time to get the spoil and the prey. They're just, he's just fine. To every man a damsel or two. To Sisera a prey of diverse colors, a prey of diverse colors of needlework, of diverse colors of needlework on both sides, meet for the necks of them that take the spoil. So they're saying, oh no, he's just fine. And, but they're obviously wrong. And since this says um, the, the wise ladies, you cannot help but think of Ezekiel chapter 13, where it speaks of false prophets. That's what that whole chapter is about. It tells you how to spot one. If, they don't, if what they're saying is not from God's word, then they're a false prophet. If they're claiming to be a preacher or whatever. It speaks of how many people say, oh, God said this or God said that, but God didn't speak to them. And it even then it even you even go to it says how the, the daughters sew coverings over the fingers of Almighty God when God would be trying to save, or even when his wrath is about to come down, the false prophets, and that could be men or women, the false prophets that they, they hide it from you. What do they say? Oh no, it's gonna be fine. Like it says in Ezekiel 13, they say it's gonna be peace, peace, but there is no peace. They say you don't have to worry. You're going to fly away in a rapture anyway. Don't worry about it. But that's all a complete lie. And what does it say in Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 20? It says that the false prophets, and remember that's men or women, they hunt souls to make them fly. And if you believe that you're going to fly away in a rapture before it's time to stand against the false Christ, you're going to be one of the very first people deceived and worshiping him. Because Satan is coming disguised as Christ claiming to bring salvation to the world, claiming to be Christ. Nobody is flying away. That's a lie by men. And if you want to listen to men instead of God, then you deserve to be deceived. Verse 31 to complete the chapter. So let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might, and the land had rest forty years. When it says goeth forth as the sun, you might think of Malachi chapter 4, even speaking of the return of Jesus Christ. But also I wanted to mention, I mentioned it yesterday and I was maybe going to go there and read it today, but we're not going to. But it's Psalms 83. And Psalms 83 gives you the enemies of God. And, and it says how the, they, they work together trying to destroy those who love God. Well, is it, is it going to work? Of course not. But it's so interesting because it, it mentions of multiple things that happen in Judges. It mentions what, what J.L. did to Sisera. It mentioned what we're about to get to with Gideon in Judges chapter 6 and chapter 7. So I think that's very, very interesting. And I, I recommend going and reading that for yourself. And God makes it very clear. The enemies are going to be taken out. They don't have a chance against a true servant of God that knows God's word, that's willing to do something. Not just someone that goes to church every week and says, oh, I'm saved and does a bunch of religious stuff, but they don't ever really read the Bible, not truly trying to learn it. Those are the kind of people that are going to be deceived. But a true servant of God, Satan doesn't have even the slightest chance against you. And so you will be ready to make that stand. Remember, don't ever forget to look for the types, look for the prophecies, and look for the lessons in this book of Judges and throughout the whole Old Testament and, of course, throughout the whole entire Bible. These are not just stories. These are the instructions that give us the tools to have victory in the spiritual battle. Don't ever take it for granted. I'll mention one other thing, Psalms 37. If, if you ever think that it's the wicked that are, that are prospering, God says they're going to wither as the grass. They're going to be cut off. And you will be rewarded if you serve God. Let's go to His throne. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for Your Word. We thank You again for always giving us the victory and letting us know there's nothing to fear. 
We thank you for giving us this place we can share your word. And we just ask you to continue to give us understanding, not for, just for ourselves, but so we can share it with others. Thank you, and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus' precious name, amen. This is recorded in the year 2021 at Smyrna Christian Church by Pastor Jesse Sisk. God bless.